on this podcast, we discuss fitness, nutrition, overall health, and overall well-being. As you can see today, you guys, we have another guest with us, Miss Deborah Miller. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Peter Gay. Thank you for having me. It's, it's my pleasure, and I'm sure we will have a great conversation because today's topic, you guys, is stress free progress into retirement and miss deborah is retired yes i am <laughs> awesome and she's also a pilates instructor so we will kind of just flow those two together you know your retirement process how you prepared for retirement and what brought you into pilates so are we ready to rock and roll sounds great we're ready to rock and roll awesome 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 so tell us a little bit about yourself i know you're a um, retired corporate executive mm -hmm. I know you are a Pilates instructor. Tell us a little bit more about Miss Deborah. Well, I grew up in Wisconsin. Okay. And then after I graduated from college with my undergraduate degree, I moved to Miami, Florida, where I lived pretty much my entire adult life. Okay. And then uh, in about 2014, a gentleman with whom I had worked throughout my corporate career offered me what I thought was an outstanding position to come with a company here in Atlanta. Okay. It was a vice presidential position mm -hmm. and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to take this challenge. Right. And so um, after living my entire adult life in Miami, Miami Beach specifically, I decided in 2014 to accept this position and I moved here to Atlanta. Oh, okay. However, for about 15 years, even at that time, in Miami, I'd been taking Pilates. Right. I became inspired by a young lady who actually was a Pilates instructor. Okay. And she worked out at the same gym that I worked at oh. and told me that she thought I would do great at Pilates. Right. And at first I was kind of poo-pooing it, I'm very type A, I was mm -hmm. more into cardio. Um, and then I began to reconsider it, and I got hooked. Okay. And so that is what inspired me. Right, to right. To take Pilates, and I did Pilates for about 15 years at that point. Oh, now okay. it's been about 20. Awesome. So you've actually answered one of my questions, because okay. the next question <laughs> I was going to ask you was, what motivated or inspired you mm -hmm. to get into Pilates? Mm -hmm. So this was someone you knew personally? Yes. Yeah, so uh, actually, the, the lady's name is Jackie Weiner. She owns the Pilates Place. There are two studios in Miami, Florida. Okay. And I took private lessons with her uh, off and on over a period of about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, she knows this. I credit her with being my inspiration for right. my love of Pilates. Good, 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 amazing. And we all have that story of that one person who motivated mm -hmm. or inspired us to go down a particular path. And it's, that's awesome. That is awesome. So before we get into Pilates, let's talk about your corporate experience, right? Did you enjoy being a corporate executive? You know some people get up and go to work sometimes and we just hate going to work, right? Tell us about your experience as a corporate executive. I loved it. I, I loved I loved it. It was a learning experience every day. I loved the challenge. Mm -hmm. I loved the fast pace. I worked long hours. I was a single mother. My my daughter, um, well, since my daughter was three, I was single. Okay. So there was a lot of juggling going on, certainly. Right. Um, and to fit in my health, health and mm -hmm. fitness routine, as well as to be a mom and mm -hmm. be there for her, um, was a challenge. But it was a juggling act and we managed through and uh, so everything everything worked fine right. right challenges at both ends right so do you find that it was um, difficult you know how they say being a female in corporate America sometimes can be harder do you find that it was difficult compared to your male counterparts <sighs> Put it this way, I would say that times have changed significantly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think in the 80s when I was, you know, I just finished graduate school and I was really trying to establish a career and grow mm -hmm. and then having been a single mother, it was very challenging. Um, calling in if your child was sick was not something you did at that time. Right. Um, staying home with a sick child was not something you did. Um, but you find ways to work around it. Right. Um, if you right. want to do something enough, you just figure mm -hmm. it out. And my way of figuring out um, the sick child routine was, thank God I had a very healthy young daughter, so right. she didn't get sick that much. much. <laughs> But as I hired a nursing service, oh, okay. and a nursing service would come to the house and, and care for her. Right. So we all 
you know, have to deal with certain situations in life. Mm -hmm. I didn't like to look at it as a, it as a male versus female thing. Right, right. To me, it was just a life situation mm -hmm. that I had to deal with, and other people have to deal with other life situations. Right. So, were you into health and fitness at that point, being a single mother, being a corporate executive? Were you working out? Did you go to the gym? How, how did you manage that? I was. You're absolutely right. Um, I went to the gym. Uh, when I could in, bring my daughter. Um, a couple of the gyms I went to did have um, daycare where you could drop okay. your child off yeah. for an hour or two. And then my other way around it was, quite frankly, I went out and I purchased a Stairmaster. Oh, okay. And <laughs> I bought the gym style Stairmaster and kept it in my house. And uh, that's pretty much what got me through. Right, if right. If I needed a cardio routine or if I didn't have time, if it was 10 o'clock at night and I hadn't gotten my workout in, right. I could do it because the Stairmaster was right there and it was handy. Right. So I'm going to throw something else at you. How did you manage just life overall, right? You had girlfriends, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go out and have a glass of wine or have dinner with a friend? Or how did you manage being a single mother managing your fitness and your overall health, being a corporate executive and having some kind of social life. How did you manage that? Well, I think my daughter was my priority. Okay. Um, I would say that the good thing, and it was a good thing at the time, was her father uh, would see her on alternate weekends. Okay. So I would just take the opportunity to alternate weekends mm -hmm. to socialize with my girlfriends and, um, and just have a good time. Right, okay. So then, now we're talking about retirement, right? <laughs> and having a stress-free transition into retirement. Whether we like it or not, we're, we are going to retire at some point in our life, right? <laughs> um, so no, some of us probably sooner than others, but it is coming, right? Um, so how, how did you prepare for that? At what point did you decide that, you know, I need to start planning for my retirement? Well, I think there are two phases to me mm -hmm. uh, of planning for retirement. One is the financial part, mm -hmm. and and then the other is just the uh, psychological and the emotional part. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was raised uh, with a family that basically always uh, stressed saving and always stressed putting away uh, money for a rainy day, if you will, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I, in my 20s, really began starting a retirement account, Good quite frankly, you. and money I didn't see, I didn't know I had, and I tried to budget around, you know, the cash flow that I had. And so I think my family imparted that upon me, I try and impart that upon my child, mm -hmm. um, and so I was always, you know, planning for that financial part. So that right. was taken care of. Right. So then I would say probably about five to ten years before I actually did retire. I was thinking, well, I'm going to have to retire sometime, and I know I'm very type A. A lot of people would tell me there's no way you can retire, you're too active. Right. And I thought, oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I, can always, I can always find something to do. Right. Um, but then, right around that time, I was into the Pilates, and I thought, you know, this would be a fabulous thing that I could do part time, mm -hmm. um, still, it, and it would be in the health and fitness field, which has always been an avocation of mine. And so I sort of set a plan just in my head. I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't really do anything or take any action on it at the time. That that's kind of what I wanted to do was teach Pilates in retirement. It was something that I could do five, ten hours a week if I chose to, right. um, it would keep me healthy. And uh, so that was kind of the goal in terms of one thing to keep me busy, mm -hmm. um, I had. And the other was I knew that I needed some mental stimulation. Right. And I always had an interest in World War II, the European theater. Okay. But I never studied it. I was never a student of history. Mm -hmm. um, I was more business, obviously. And, and finance and a numbers person, but I always felt that I was lacking in um, a real in-depth knowledge of history and I wanted to learn more, and especially once again, the European theater, World War II, but then how did we get there from World War I, etc. So right. I just basically have embarked upon uh, a plan of, uh, I've taken classes at Emory University through the OSHA Learning Center. Um, I have, uh, I belong to this online subscription course called GreatCoursesPlus.com. Okay, I've taken a number of courses um, through that. 
And then I just have, you know, found books and picked up books and have done a lot of, of right. just reading by myself. It sounds like yeah. you are a pretty busy woman so. in your retirement. <laughs> oh my God, good for you. But one of the things that kind of stick out to me from what you said was it was instilled in you at an early age to start putting away just a little bit for your retirement. Mm -hmm. And that's the same way I feel about just overall health and fitness, yes. right? Because I'm sure you've kind of instilled that in your daughter at an early age, yes, to save for your retirement, but overall health and fitness as well. So as she get older, you know, she will carry that with her. Absolutely. And she is very fit to this day. Mm -hmm. She and I I uh, will Zoom Pilates. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> since, since COVID, she's working from home. She'll right. call me some days and she'll say, Mom, can we Zoom? I can we Zoom it. Pilates at 10 o'clock? Right. And can we do that? Um, and uh, she and her husband uh, had a gym membership pre-COVID, but mm -hmm. since that happened, they went and purchased a Peloton. Mm -hmm. So they both have active, healthy lifestyles. Right, right, right. And um, the advantage she has, because she's a mom with two children, um, is that now during COVID, she can manage her calendar so that she can fit her workout in. Good yes, for her. Husband, her in the middle of the day. So right. that's a nice advantage. If there's anything good about COVID, which there's probably nothing, but well, there, there there is. you have a lot yeah. of flexibility. Mm -hmm. That's right. So did, were you, when you started thinking about retirement, did you have any anxiety or were you nervous or any doubts? You know, how did you feel about that as you start to approach those years? So I didn't. I was looking forward to it and I had a plan. Okay. And the interesting thing was when I did move to Atlanta to accept this position that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I had thought, well, I'm going to commit to this to five years, and then that's it, I'm retiring. Right. Well, in the corporate world, things don't always go as planned, and when a company isn't doing well, they begin to lay people off, mm -hmm. and my position was eliminated. Oh. After three years of the five-year okay. uh, tenure that I, in my mind, and, mm -hmm. and had communicated I was going to uh, the right that's what you're planning done and prepared right, for exactly mm -hmm. however uh, being 67 years old at that time there was no way I was going to find another job in the corporate world right. maybe. but B it was only two years and I was just ready to retire and I was able to just accept that and since I had done all of this thought process and the uh, the emotional preparation for it maybe some people might have thought it was prematurely but as it turned out when my position was eliminated two years prior to my own you know mental time right um i was fine with it you know, the first the first you know few months you wake up in the morning you're like okay take my oh, coffee okay. it's time to go to no work more, oh i'm not going to work exactly. no more 10 hour days no more working on the weekends no more working at night right but gradually i put my plan in place and yes. um, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm not, I've not been bored for a day. Good for you. Good for you. So let's talk about Pilates. So now you are retired. You're done with the 12 hour days. You're done with working on the weekends and you are a Pilates instructor. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about that. Like what you decided to get a certification and start to, you know, teach people Pilates. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So I had been um, taking, uh, most of the, my instructors are, uh, and, and Pilates classes I'd taken were taught by um, people that were trained in the method called the STOT method. Okay, S-T-O-T-T, -T. Uh, -T. -T. Okay. However, um, another method that I was familiar with is Polestar, and they actually happen to be headquartered in Miami. Oh, okay. And as I began to research the two of them, I thought that the Polestar method is very physical therapy oriented, and um, I like their their program and their routine and the way that uh, I could approach the um, training. Right. Um, I chose the Polestar method. Okay. And so what you what it is, it's rather it's very much more extensive than I thought. First mm -hmm. of all, I'd never taken an anatomy course in my <laughs> life. I knew what a bicep and a tricep was. <laughs> that was it. it. Okay. And you have to learn all the muscles, you have to learn all the bones in the body, you have to learn the points of origin and insertion, and no wonder people flunk out of you know, med school, or, or, right. they don't, or they don't get, ex or they drop out their right. plan in med school when they take a, an anatomy class. But anyway, 
So I did that, and then it's a training period of um, six or seven months, and okay. once a month, I would spend a weekend in Nashville, that's where the training was, mm -hmm. um, and then there was a, a lot of studying in between, there was a lot of practice, you have to put in 500 hours of, of training okay. and observation and practice, and then um, I went to Miami and passed the certification, nice. and um, right after that began began teaching. Okay, so how would you say Pilates help with just overall health and fitness? Because, uh, like yourself, I'm a Type A person. I sprinted in college, so I love that high intensity. How would you convince someone like me to, uh, you know? <laughs> Pilates and how would you say it affects you know just my overall health and well-being so the, the thing about Pilates especially if you're a sprinter or if you're physically active in any other way uh, weightlifting or whatever mm -hmm. is first of all it puts your body in perfect alignment it, Number one is excellent for posture, mm -hmm. and as we get older, which your posture is perfect posture. right now. I'm looking at you like, girl, I need to straighten up your back. <laughs> the posture is so important, and especially in this day and age, yes, with everybody posture. walking around with your iPhones, your shoulders are slumped, your head is down, and so it, it, it aligns your spine in in and and um, places your joints in optimal positions so that you carry yourself properly, you can breathe properly, your rib cage expands, and so that as you age, um, for example, when you have surgery, after the doctors make you blow into this thing, mm -hmm. spectrometer or whatever it's called, so often if you're crunched down like this, you can't take a breath. Right. You know? And as you get older, it's important, your the muscles between your rib cage contract mm -hmm. and you're holding like this, try and take a breath like this. <gasps> you, you just yes. can't. Whereas Pilates helps you open it open up. Open everything yes. up and so you can, you know, you can breathe mm -hmm. and you're, you're tall, you're not going to walk around like this shriveled up so your back is bent. So right. you stay nice and tall and erect as you get into your old age. Mm -hmm. um, well, into your old age. I mean, face it, we're all going there. We are all going, going there, whether we like it or not. <laughs> and, it's, and it's best to go there gracefully, right? Exactly. <laughs> And it keeps your muscles elongated, mm -hmm. and so you are graceful. Um, you maintain a sense of balance, mm -hmm. um, so that you know preventing falls as you age, yes. Yes. And, and eventual you know need for surgery. Mm -hmm. So, would you recommend someone who's never really worked out? I'm I am retired, right? Never been to the gym, never worked out. I want to start Pilates. Is it something that you recommend? Absolutely. Oh, okay. absolutely. Because even I have two clients here at the center. One is a 77 year old woman, another is an 86 year old woman. Wow. They don't do any other. I mean, physical activities other than possibly, you know, maybe some gardening and their, their normal social activities. Um, and so it's helping to keep their body aligned, it's helping their balance, mm -hmm. it's helping them control one side of the body and the other side of the body. Mm -hmm. And so um, they feel really good, their muscles are lengthened after they leave here, and they're not stiff. Right. They, walk. they right. walk gracefully, even mm -hmm. you know, at their ages, they're walking gracefully so that their muscles are nice and long and their spine is nice and long. I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> what, one, last qu one last question for you, um, Deborah. What advice would you give to someone who wants to get into Pilates, right? I'm retiring and I'm thinking mm -hmm. Pilates may be the way for me to go. Mm -hmm. What advice would you have for that person? Well, first of all, I would suggest that they find a reputable Pilates instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not recommend that they go to a gym and participate in some big mat class. Good, good. I would absolutely recommend that they find a Pilates instructor with whom they can have a connection. Mm -hmm. um, a Pilates instructor who has taught um, new uh, people who are new, new to Pilates right, in the past. Right, yeah. um, and I would definitely 
suggest that they consider private sessions for quite right. some time. If right. you're just starting when you're you know, 67 years old and you haven't taken a Pilates class before, you definitely should do private lessons, one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one instruction. Mm -hmm. To um, learn proper form, learn proper, proper technique, form, right? Proper technique, Someone focusing on just you. Focusing on mm -hmm. just you. And then um, potentially maybe smaller classes, duet classes at right. some point, or not, mm -hmm. or not. Just continue with the private one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. direction. It almost is like, working with a physical therapist right, uh, or a trainer. Right, lives. right. And so as you mentioned, as, you know, one-on-one -on -one and going to a studio, we are currently at the center, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a Pilates studio located here in Marietta, Georgia. And this is where um, you offer your classes? That's correct. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so and there are other instructors here who are fabulous mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. So we are currently at the center, the Pilates studio and it's located at 255 Village Parkway, Suite 240 in Marietta, Georgia. And that's where um, one of the places that you can check out Miss um, Deborah. This is an amazing conversation. Miss Deborah, thank you so much for taking your time out to have this conversation with us as we talk about the stress-free transition into retirement. As we mentioned earlier, it's inevitable. We will retire at some point, right? <laughs> But you have to have a plan for that, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You have to, and you don't want to wait until you're 50 years old because it may be a little bit too late, right? And if something happened, like in your case, you weren't planning on retirement for, for three more years. Is that correct? Two more. Two mm -hmm. more years. And because you had a plan in place, you were mentally prepared, you were physically prepared, and you're now happily retired. I am. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, well, thank you guys so very much for joining us on Yet Another podcast and thank you so very much Deborah we appreciate the conversation thank you it's a pleasure thank you thank you so much and again you guys you can find